3.6, polynomial and rational inequalities. So our first example is we will have to solve the following equation, the following polynomial, minus 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. So what we're going to do, um, an easy way to get a visualization is to actually look at the graph, although we're going to be able to do it without looking at the graph. Okay, the graph of this equation, this is a really awful graph, looks something like this. Okay, so basically what I want is I want to know at which x value this thing is above the 0 and which x vac value on this side it's above 0. So um, I will have negative infinity to some x value. I don't know which x value it is until we do it. Union with the other x value over here to positive infinity. Okay, if um, it was less than zero, it could have been between these two things. So it'll just depend on what you're asked to do, and we'll do a few of them where we'll just do all of them all for the same equation. So the first thing, the easiest thing to do is to solve this and find where my zeros will actually be. So in this case, I'll factor it. So what multiplies to negative five that adds to negative 4, so I'll have a 5 and a 1, and it will have to be negative 5 and positive 1 to get to negative 4. Okay, then I tell me what my x equals. x equals 5 and negative 1. Okay, so I have negative 1 over here and positive 5, even though I have a really awful graph. And just from looking at my graph, I can pretty well see that since negative 1 is on the left-hand side, it will be negative infinity to negative 1 and with a union of 5 to positive infinity. Okay, without looking at the graph, what I'm going to do is you don't necessarily have to draw the number line. Um, it's pretty simple to do it though. So I have negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a number on both sides or in between each interval. So I'm going to pick a number between negative 1 and 5. The easiest one to pick is 0. So I'm going to plug 0 into my equation. And what do I get? Is it positive or negative? So I'd have 0 squared. I'm going to write f of 0 equals 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 5. And I'm going to see if that's greater than or equal or greater than zero, just greater than zero. Okay, so I would get out negative five. And my question is negative five, basically greater than question mark, greater than zero. No, it's negative. So this is not part of my solution between these two numbers. I don't even know which one my five is at. Okay, so this is not. So I'm going to write negative because I want something that's positive. Then I'm going to plug in, let's say, negative 2. So f of negative 2. When I plug that into my equation, I have negative 2 minus 5. It doesn't matter which equation you plug it into. Um, this is just fairly simple to do my order of operations with. Okay, Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. What's negative 7 times negative 1? Positive 7. So over here, everything I have will be positive. In between 1 and negative and 1, negative 1 and 5, it will be negative. And we're also going to plug in positive 6. It doesn't matter which number you plug in. I'm going to do 6 minus 5 times 6 minus, plus 1. 6 minus 5 is 1, 6 plus 1 is 7, that gives me positive 7. Okay, so over here on this side of it, it will get positive 7. Okay, so since I want everything greater than 0, I'm going to go ahead and still write my answer the same way. Okay, um, the brackets will depend on what my inequality symbol was. If I had an equal to underneath, I would have a square bracket. Just the, another example, if I had basically the same equation with a different inequality sign, so x plus 1 
if I had it as less than zero, um, then I'm looking at everything that's below my x-axis. So then these would all be backwards. So this is less than zero because it was negative if I were to plug in a number. And so it will be between these two numbers that I found. So it will be from negative one to five. If I wanted to change it and have an equal sign, then I'd have square brackets. So it's all just a notation kind of thing. So um, if it's greater than, um, in this case, it'll just depend on what your graph will look like, which you guys can look at the graph if you want to, if you want to plug it into the graphing calculator or graph it yourself. But the easiest way is going to be to test just some few points. Um, but without testing those points, really, it's pretty hard to actually tell which pieces are going to do it. So be sure to test those points. Okay, another example is x squared plus 3x minus 5 minus x minus 3. That's not the one I actually wanted to start by giving you. Minus 5 is less than or equal to x plus 3. So what I have to do is I have to get everything to one side and I will just do everything um, in terms of 0. So I'm going to subtract x, subtract x, subtract 3, subtract 3, and I will get x squared plus 2x minus 8. And I want to find when that is less than or equal to 0. So I'm going to do this without graphing it, so I'm going to factor this. So what multiplies to negative 8, that will add to positive 2. And that will give me x, and that will be a positive 4 and a negative 2 to get to positive 2. Okay, so my zeros will be at x equals negative 4 and positive 2. I'm just writing them actually like kind of in number line order. So if I wanted to put it on the number line, I can do that. So I'm going to have negative 4, have a 0, and 1, 2. Okay, so I can pick numbers on both sides of my equation. So this is at least where I know stuff will happen at. Whoops, not at 3. At 2. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make a solid dot since it has an equal sign underneath it. It doesn't really matter so much because the number line is not going to be what our answer is. We're actually going to write it in the interval notation. So what we're going to do is we have a number between negative 4 and 2. The easiest one to pick is 0. So we're going to test and what happens when we plug in 0. Okay, so I'm going to pick this one to plug it into. I could plug it into this one or this one. It doesn't matter. So if I wanted to do 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 8, is that less than or equal to 0? So 0, 0, 0 is negative 8, less than or equal to 0? Yes, so this is a good thing. Okay, I'll try to do a different color. So that's what we want to happen. Okay, then we're going to plug in negative 5. Negative 5 squared plus 2 times negative 5 minus 8. Is that less than or equal to 0? 0, not 6. 25 minus 10 minus 8. Is that less than or equal to 0? 25 minus 10, 15, 15 minus 8 is 7. Is 7 less than 0? No. So this is a big fat no. Okay, and then we're going to do 3. 3 squared plus 3 times, or 2 times 3, I'm sorry. Minus 8, is that less than or equal to 0? So I have 9 plus 6 minus 8. Is that going to be less than or equal to 0? 9 and 6 is 15 minus 8. 7 is not less than or equal to 0. We're doing a lot of problems with 7s for some reason. So this is not it. So this here between these points is our solutions. Since it has an equal sign, we're going to have square brackets. We'll have square brackets from negative 4 to 2 in square brackets. Okay, I moved my answer so that we can do a similar example over here. 
So I have x cubed minus x is greater than 0. Okay, so I'm going to factor this out, find all my zeros. And then x out front, x squared minus 1 is greater than 0. Keep factoring this piece. Still have the x out front. This is the difference of squares, so I have x minus 1, x plus 1. And I want to find, so I'm going to plot all my zeros on a number line, so I have x equals negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So when I go to actually plot that, I don't actually have to do that piece of the number line. So I will have 0. I'm going to make some space. I have negative 1 and 1. Okay, so I basically need to test a point between each one. So that will be negative 1 half will probably be the easiest, and positive 1 half. Over here, I can pick any point I want. I'm going to choose negative 2 and positive 2. Okay, since I really don't care what happens at my easy 0 point, we'll just start on the left side, so at negative 2. I have negative 2 cubed minus negative 2. And I want to see, is that greater than 0 or not? Negative 2 cubed will be negative 8. That will become plus 2. Is that greater than 0? That will be negative 6, so that will not be. That will be a no over here. Okay, and then I'm going to test my point between these things. So negative 1 half. So I have negative 1 half cubed minus negative 1 half. Is that greater than 0? So 1 half cubed will be negative 1 eighth plus 1 half. Okay, 1 eighth is bigger than 1 half. Um, you could get a common denominator. This would be 4 eighths. Okay, so 4 eighths minus 1 eighth, that will be 3 eighths. Is that bigger than 0? Yes. So over here it's yes. That's what I want. Okay, then I'm going to pick positive 1 half. So I have 1 half cubed minus 1 half. Is that greater than 0? So I need to put a big X over here. Rawr. Okay, that's 1 eighth minus 1 half. Is that greater than 0? Common denominators again. 1 eighth minus 4 eighths. Is that greater than 0? That would be negative 3 eighths, which is not greater than 0. So this is a no. This is my rawr. Okay, I'm going to leave a little bit of extra room. I'm going to come over here onto this side. And then I'm going to plug in positive 2. I'll have 2 cubed minus 2. Is that greater than 0? It's a cube, not a squared. So I have 8 minus 2. Um, 6 is definitely bigger than 0. Yay! So I'll go back to my same color. So I have a bunch of different intervals. So this one does not work. This one does from here to here. This one does not work. And from here on does work. So this is negative 1 to 0. We will use parentheses, not square brackets, because our sign does not have an equal sign on the bottom. So my answer will look like negative 1 with a parentheses to 0, union, positive 1 to infinity. So anytime I have to solve a polynomial inequality, so even if it was 3x to the 4th plus 10x is less than or equal to 11x cubed plus 4. My first step, so number 1, is to get everything on the same side. So get everything on the same side. Okay, so that would just be doing 11 minus 11x 11 cubed minus 11x 11 cubed minus 4. And I want everything equal to 0 over here. Okay, so basically this means one side equals 0. Um, the second step, which we don't necessarily have to do it um, actually on paper, just treat it like it. And that is to put your polynomial 
equal to zero. And the only reason you do that is to solve the polynomial. And that's what we've been doing. That's just doing this piece, how we factored it. Basically factor it and find those zeros. Okay, and the third step is with solutions. With solutions, which is x equals zero. I.e. x equals zeros. That's a, an apostrophe s. So with your zeros where x equals, your solutions where x equals zero, um, make intervals on number line. Okay, the fourth step that you're going to do is determine, um, I like to put those inequality symbols back in and just check or not whether things are true or false. So if you wanted to do a false, true, false, true, you could also do that. And your trues for wherever you tested those intervals are what your solution set is going to be like. And that's your solution set there. Okay. And your fourth step is basically determine solution sets. Okay, and then your next example is x minus 3, x plus 4. And I want to know when that fraction is greater than or equal to x plus 2 over x minus 5. Okay, um, for these rational functions is really when I like the steps that we kind of did before um, because they say to just treat it like an equal sign instead of an inequality sign. Okay, but um, I don't particularly like getting everything just on the same side right away. Um, some of the things you can kind of move around, move around your choices and where you're doing things. The first thing I'm going to do is say what my domain is. So my domain is when my x um, is equal to zero is what my x cannot equal. So x cannot equal positive five or negative four. So that will be part of the intervals that we set up like we did for the polynomial. We'll have to have these points on there. Um, and then what I like to do is treat it like an equal sign. So I have x minus three, x plus four. Um, and we treat this as an equal sign. And we rewrite x plus 2, x minus 5, and then we clear our denominators. So what we're missing is x plus 4 and x minus 5. That's a minus sign. Okay, and then what's going to happen is over here, um, this is a point where you guys really don't have to write it out, but I will. I will have x plus 4 x minus 5, and I had x plus, x minus 3 to start with, and that is all over x plus 4. That's equal to x plus 4, x minus 5, times we had x plus 2 already, over x minus 5. So those pieces you get to cross out. I had 4 on the bottom over here, not 5. Okay, so over here I have x minus 5 and x minus 3, and I have to multiply those together. So I have x squared minus 3x minus 5x plus 15. And over here on this side I have x squared. I have x plus 4 and x plus 2 to multiply. x plus 2x plus 4x plus 8. Then I get everything on the same side, so I'm going to subtract my x squared. Um, then I'm going to basically add these two pieces together, and I'm going to subtract 6x minus 6x, and that way I just am saving a little bit of a step, and minus 8. And my x squared adds a 0x squared. I have negative 3, negative 5, and negative 6 to add together. So that will give me negative 14x. 
and plus 7 equals 0. Um, since I don't actually have any x squareds that I ended up with, I want to get my 7 back over to the other side. So minus 7, minus 7. I have negative 14x equals negative 7. Divide by negative 14. Divide both sides by negative 14. And I get x equals positive 1 half. So those turn to positives. Then I'm basically putting some things back onto a number line. So if I have my number line here, I'm going to put out all my numbers. And my numbers will be, I'm going to start with 0, just writing it on here. I have negative 4. I have positive 1 half. 0 I just put on there for a reference. It's not necessarily one of my actual points. 2, 3, 4, and 5. Since 5 is my other point. So now I need to pick points between 1 half and 5. A number greater than 5. Numbers between 4 and 1 half. And a number on the other side of 4. Okay, so if I really think about what my graph were to look like, I would have my asymptotes here at negative 4 and 5. And so I will have to see what happens at 1 half. And then we'll basically decide what our graph will look like after that. So I'll pick a different color. Let's plug in negative 5. So I have negative 5. I'm going to plug it back into my very original equation. I have negative 5 minus 3 over negative 5 plus 4. And I want to see if that is greater than or equal to negative 5 plus 2. Um, over negative 5 minus 5. Okay, so I'm going to write negative 5 on here just so I know what point I'm picking at. And then I'm going to evaluate this thing. So I have negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So I actually have just positive 8. So those will go to 0. I'll just make them pluses. So I have positive 8, and I want to see if that's bigger than or equal to Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 10. Those both go to positives. So is 8 greater than or equal to 3 tenths? Yes, it is. So this is a true statement over here. So this is part of what will be our stuff. So since I have an equal sign, I know I'll have a square bracket at negative 4 if I were to put that on number line. Okay. Then I'm going to plug in a number between negative 4 and 1 half. 0 is an nice easy one. I have 0 minus 3 over 0 plus 4. Is that bigger than or equal to 0 plus 2 over 0 minus 5? And the tricky part, on most of our examples, we've had things that alternate on every one of these. And they will not always alternate. So we can't just say this one's true, so this one's false, true, false. Because that's not necessarily what's going to happen. So I have negative 3 over positive 4. Is that greater than or equal to 2 over 5? And that will be negative. Um, the easiest thing I think to do in the calculator is do your decimals. So I have negative 0.75. And 2 fifths will be negative um, 0.4. Okay, so when you do that, which one is bigger? And we're thinking number line kind of bigger. So even though 7.5 is bigger than 4, since it's negative, 0.4 is actually bigger. So this one is not true. So I'm going to write an F up here for false for this interval. So this one. So at least at 1 half, I don't know exactly what's happening yet. So I don't know if I will even have a symbol over here. So now let's pick a number between 1 half and 5. I'm going to pick 1. So 1 minus 3 over 1 plus 4. Is that bigger than or equal to 1 plus 2 over 1 minus 5? I'm going to move over here a little bit. That's my imply sign so that I can um, just see what's going on so that I can leave a little bit more room. So I'm just going to check, is negative 2 over 5 bigger than or equal to 3 and 
and then negative 4. So negative 2 fifths is negative 0.4. Is that bigger than or equal to negative 0.75? Why yes, yes it is, because negative 4 is on the right side of negative 75. So this is a true statement. So I know I, at least I go this direction. So now I need to see what happens on the other side of 5. So we're going to plug in 6, so I have 6 minus 3 over 6 plus 4. Is that bigger than or equal to 6 plus 2 over 6 minus 5? It's going to happen over here. 6 minus 3 is 3. 6 plus 4 is 10. It is 3 tenths bigger than 6 plus 1, or 6 plus 2 is 8 over 6 minus 5 is 1. Is 3 tenths bigger than 8? No, it's not. So it will end right here. So this is a false statement. And then I get to write my final amount, my final interval notation things, which I'll just pick a different color and write it over here. And I will have negative infinity to negative 4, the square bracket. And that will be a union with one half. Whoops, I didn't write my one half, my union sign or my interval sign up there very well. And that will start at one half. And that will only go to five. And they will have square brackets. So this is what my solution will look like for that. So just to be sure on your um, how you get to your answers, you find where your denominator equals zero. Find where x equals 0 on bottom, I'm just going to write. And then actually solve. You can cross multiply or clear denominators. I'm going to write clear denominators because cross multiplying is a way to do that. So clear denominators and solve. And then you're basically breaking it up into the same things we did before over here where we're making intervals on the number line is your next step and then determine those solution sets. I want you to do homework on page 368 numbers 1, 3 through 75 by 3's. Sorry that I keep making a mess here. It's 3 through 75.